Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dr. Duncan McCollum coming to you live from KSCO. Let me press that button there. Hold on. There we go. I uh, learned that um, I have to, I can't play my songs on Facebook when I start my show. I always like to play a song today. I played a song, Light Shine by Jesse Cullen Young. But apparently um, their Facebook will cut it and not allow the show to play in certain areas. So I just said, okay, well, I'll just tell you guys to let your light shine and we'll go from there. So today um, I'm going to carry on a wee bit on what we were talking about last week and right at the end of the hour of the last show. And, uh, you know, it has to do with what it really takes to be healthy. You know, obviously the um, huge industrial pharmaceutical complex has done a great job for the shareholders, but a terrible job for the, you know, the peoples of OIF and the peoples specifically of the United States, because, you know, there are so many different medications out there that are covering up symptoms and furthering the damage or allowing the damage to continue. It's kind of like you have a nail in your tire and you just keep driving it and pumping it up every time the tire gets low and then eventually the tire is just going to blow. So, and I was, uh, you know, mentioning to uh, Kristen and, and Numa, you know, the fact that there's over seven, 4,000 different medications that will actually damage the mitochondria. And you can look that up online and on PubMed. And, uh, if the mitochondria is what keeps the 75 trillion cells functioning, it keeps it alive, and you're damaging the mitochondria, then you're doing a bad job, or you're not helping the body, you might be helping the symptoms, you know, but um, might as well just be killing, killing me slowly, you know, which is uh, not the best solution when you take a look at what the options are. And the option is, of course, to um, get your body healthy. And it doesn't happen overnight. We, you know, wherever you, uh, it's like watching a mini series and coming in on the fifth season on the 13th show, you know, you missed a lot. <laughs> so you got to back up and you've got to figure out, okay, what are the basics of health? What, is, what do I have to do to start to become healthy? Well, first of all, and, uh, Numa was talking about it too, is, you know, don't eat food that has commercial with it. That's one thing. And even more specifically, if anything, you know, if you're in the grocery store and you pick up any pro any food stuff and there's on the label words you don't understand, put it down and run because it's processed. that has been, you know, devoided of nutrients and better yet, if it isn't coming out of the ground by itself and you eat it the way it's come out of the ground or sky, then uh, don't eat it. You know, now we have to even go a step further and talk about what's happening with the GMO products and the stuff that has been hy hybridized so much that it's not very consumable or digestible and utilizable by the hundred trillion bugs in our digestive system. So you know, with it, let's go back to 1970 in Mexico City when Dr. Blaylock won the Nobel Prize for creating a wheat that had seven times the um, product or seven times the um, payload that regular wheat did. So before we actually were genetically modifying it by understanding the DNA and all that stuff, they were breeding it and cross-pollinating it more naturally, I guess. But
but they would cross pollinate it. And then you would get these strange products, um, large growing fruits and vegetables and grains, but it, it didn't happen naturally. And it happens so rapidly that the animals that eat it or uh, live off of it could not really reap the benefits of the nutrients that were in it. And gluten is the perfect example. And that's what I'm talking about because when Dr. Blaylock created the new strains of grain um, that actually his goal was to end world hunger but what he ended up saying close to his death is that it, it was a mistake on his part because <clears throat> the body could not digest this stuff well enough and it increased inflammation at a cellular level and then throughout the body. And now you look at, well, that was 1970 and here it is 2024. And in the early seven, 60s and 70s, I think we had like a, and I don't know the exact number, but it was probably below 10% of autoimmune diseases in the country. Now, 80% of the population have at least one autoimmune disease. Autoimmune means the body's fighting itself. It's confused. It doesn't know which side is up. And um, so because of the chronic inflammation in the body, the body's fighting anything and everything. It's like, you know, you put a bag over somebody's head and then start poking at it. It's going to fight and it doesn't know who it's fighting and where it's just starting to swing. And that's what an autoimmune disease basically is. So um, how do you reverse the autoimmune disease is a great question. Um, it's not just the um, grains that, you know, Dr. Blaylock created back then, but it's the industrial complex, which has, has created so many toxins in our food. Our food is devoid of so much. Um, and at, where they've taken out vitamins and minerals in an absorbable uh, uh, level, they've filled it up with toxins that, and different chemicals that are actually damaging and hurting our body and our brain. You know, one of the big things we work with in our office these days is peripheral neuropathy, as I'm sure you all know, and I've just added another um, another modality to what we do, which is just unbelievable what the uh, thought process is on this. And when you take a look at it, I'll talk about it a little later, but what we're actually able to do, not just with peripheral neuropathy, but in health in general. And um, so you have to be able to find out where you're at. Your first plate, you know, you don't start drilling on somebody's teeth or start pulling a motor apart till you know what's wrong with it. And oftentimes trying to figure out how to fix your body, you have to know what's wrong first, because otherwise, you know, you start throwing at throwing stuff at your body that you don't, you know, it's not going to help you and it's going to actually make you sick. Perfect example, a friend of mine lives out of the state and I've known him for years, and he contacted me um, <clears throat> because a, a chiropractor that we both know that he sees said, call Duncan, and he knows me before as a chiropractor, you know, he's doing a lot of stuff. Why don't you talk to him? And so we talked, and because of the distance, I did have him fill out a neurotoxic questionnaire, which is, uh, as he pointed out, 11-page uh, questionnaire, which you can get on my website, by the way, McCollumWellness.com. And he sent it into me and the amount of stuff that he has going wrong with them. Um, you know, I'm several states away, not that we don't do remote stuff, but also being a friend, I'd rather somebody else do it than me. Um, I just find that um, it's better not working on friends and family um, for professionalism. But I sent him to a very, very good friend of mine, Texas Tammy out there in Texas. And he... Uh, as I told him she would do, she's going to do something called an oligo scan on him, which we have in our office as well. And it's a photocytometer, photocytometry. So cytometry means you're going to matter. Cyto means cell, meter, a metering of the cell. You're going to break down based on its atomic numbers, 
exactly what is in the cell. And photocytometry is what it's called. Uh, there's a, a, a device we put on your hand in the office and it takes less than five minutes to do, but it's going to compute this and give out a printout of the heavy metals in your body, the vitamins and minerals, um, the elements of your body, it, and then what your susceptibility is for system dysfunction. There's 14 systems in your body. You know, there's a circulatory system, digestive system, nervous system, um, you know, all these different systems that actually together create the sustaining of life. And when these systems break down one at a time or a part of the system, um, we start to dysfunction and that's where we start to get unhealthy. So at any rate, he did this test and she sent it to me and we talked and it's okay with him that we're working together. And number one, his zinc was off the chart. I mean, it was, when you look at the normal number, it's in green, then yellow is danger. And when it's in the red, it's a big deal. And his zinc didn't even stop on the page. It just kept going. Well, you know, just as an example, she was going over that and saying, you're, you, for whatever reason, you're getting too much zinc. He goes, oh, I take zinc as a supplement every day. Well, <laughs> you're just kind of throwing things at your body and you're probably creating a, more of a nutritional imbalance than you can imagine because copper and zinc are diabolically opposed. When you have too much zinc, you're, you can't absorb copper. When you have too much copper, you can't absorb zinc. <coughs> so you know, you don't just go take a bunch of copper and then you'll have too much copper and zinc and it's a toxic and poison. So you don't want to do that. And, but his vitamin D was none of his vitamins. They measured the vitamins in the cell. None of the vitamins were up to where they should have been, the levels. And the vitamin D was maybe at 20% of what we should have. Vitamin D is um, considered a hormone and it's very important for your immune system. Um, and you know, probably every function in the body. And um, so why would, and he, you know, he's taken vitamins and supplements and he's getting all this stuff he's taking to try to handle this very odd, not very common disease that he has. And, um, you know, it's like when you take a look and go, well, you're body's not absorbing the cells are not absorbing anything that you're taking so are very small amount so why would the cells be having such a hard time well right on the show before um kristen hurley brought up canola oil and that her daughter is well educated enough to go wow mom there's canola oil in here well canola oil is already rancid by the time it's made you just google the making and the producing of, of canola oil and watch that video for yourself. And it should disabuse you of taking it anymore. In fact, when you go to restaurants, uh, a, a group of us, when we go out, um, especially when I'm with the Papa group, you know, they all say we're allergic to coconut oil, peanut oil, seed oil. And, um, you know, it's like, these things, when your cell walls are made out of oils and those oils need to be permeable. And if they're made of the wrong stuff that doesn't exist in nature, like canola oil and some of the seed oils and peanut oils that are rancid when you get them, those 75 trillion cells are going to be um, resistant to the nutrition getting into the cell. You've heard of insulin resistance. Well, that means that insulin can't get into the cell. And what you know we're talking about here is the toxicity level around the cell or of the cell wall itself that won't let insulin in the cell. So what are the solutions? Well, in the standard um, thought, what they do is they go, well, let's, let's give you more insulin. They've never tried to fix a cell. You know, Dr. Pompa's war cry is fix the cell to get well. You know, it's when you eat rancid oils, it takes about 180 days for those oils to get out of the body. So, you know, you might think, oh, I'm going to cheat today and take a uh, fast food or something with canola in it. It's going to um, be used by the cells because your cells are, you know, your stomach cells only last five days. They're constantly being remade. 
with the tissue and the available stuff there to make them. Muscle cells last about 120 days and different cells like last 90 days, whatever. Different cells are used quicker based on you know, the, the volatility of function. And um, so when you continue to give bad products to the cell makers in your body, they're going to make cell weak cells. I mean, I remember uh, when, you know, I was a kid, you'd buy a, I, in fact, when my grandfather died, he was, it was 19, uh, 1973. And he had some, an old, old refrigerator. It was a frig, Frigidaire, you know, those old ones with the thing on top. And uh, I brought it home. He lived in Kolinga. You probably all heard of my book, Coaling Station A, which is pretty cool. You should read it on Amazon. But uh, those refrigerators, they never broke down. I mean, these cars don't break down these old cars, these old um, things. And now, you know, you're lucky to get five years out of an appliance. Do you think that's on purpose? Do you think our um, society has gotten less smart on how to make um, things? Or is it just a disposable society? Well, your body is kind of the, a product of that. You know, we we're refining foods in a way that are making us sick. And um, when you do that long enough, you, you get chronic disease. Um, we call it dis-ease. That means a body is no longer at ease or that system is no longer at ease. <clears throat> and then that body part no longer at ease will eventually just, you take the hyphen out or whatever that grammatical sim symbol is, and it's disease. So now you think of disease as like a one-syllable word that just means something bad is occurring. But re remember, the root of the word is dis-ease. It's no longer at ease. And if that goes on, it's a warning sign. Symptoms are warning signs that something's wrong. And then we cover up those symptoms with $3 trillion a year <clears throat> in pharmaceuticals that we cover up our symptoms. And you can look that up on the um, H, National Institute of Health, they'll tell you that we spent $4.3 trillion. I think 2022 is the last year they said this, uh, they have on record, and that 70% of it, and some records say 90%, but we'll go conservatively, 70% of the $4.3 trillion is in the managing of symptoms. So $3 trillion a year in the United States managing symptoms. So wow, what if we tried to put that money towards teaching people how to eat right, cleaning up our food? Um, I got a call from Rory at the end of the last show. And uh, I know you all know Rory out there because he's a great listener and he talks a lot about you know what his beliefs are. But he told me, because I was talking about lasers, he goes, there's in other countries now, they're using lasers to put it over a field. They'll laser a field, I guess at nighttime, and that lasering will help with the health of the food. I guess it kills the micro, the microbiome, the, the bad ones, and helps the synergistic ones um, continue to grow. So it's very important that we learn how to um, survive in a, in a climate like this. We have enough stress in our lives and in the world, in our workplace, in the grocery store, at the gas pump right now. And stress uh, in our lives, you know, some stress is good. It, you know, if we didn't have stress, um, our, our health would be bad. In fact, one, you know, thing when you're exposed to the elements, it increases and boosts your immune system. And uh, that's why we have this curve that goes up one side and down the other. It looks like a big mountain. And it's called hormesis. Hormesis is at one point things are good for you. Too much of it's um, going to actually kill you. Too much oxygen will kill you. Too much water will kill you. Too much food will kill you. Too much heat will kill you, but not enough heat will kill you too. So there's a point at which our bodies are hardened um, as we become more acclimated to our environment. And, you know, when you're consuming the right foods, 
your body will, you know, use those for fuel efficiently. When you have a lot of food that's filled with glucose and non-digestible stuff or toxins, your body is no longer able to efficiently use that stuff. So what does it do? It stores it on your body as fat. If you're eating too much uh, food, you know, like if I was going to fill my gas tank and I got to the point where it's uh, got all the gas it needs to go on the trip and I just keep pouring gas in there, pretty soon it's going to get on, it's going to be pouring everywhere and it's dangerous. You want that gas in the gas tank, not overflowing, rolling around on the ground. And same thing with food. You want to eat the food that is going to be healthy for you it, as much as you can. You know, none of us are going to be perfect and have a good diet, but we got to a point after World War II where, you know, we could get any kind of food we wanted anytime we wanted from any country. So we'd eat watermelons in the dead of night or a dead of winter. And you could get all these other, you know, fruits that were normally summer fruits here in winter. And um, we lost that hormetic value or curve of food. So um, we were basically taught that we could eat what we want, when we want, whenever we want, with whoever we want, however much we want all the time, right? And And so what happened is we went from a, incredibly healthy country. John F. Kennedy back in 1960, I think it was, had the, and I remember I was a kid and he said, I want every everybody in the United States to be healthy. And all the kids, we had to go, you know, do the rings and run and push-ups and pull-ups and sit-ups. That was a national movement to help us be healthy. Well, that went by the wayside. I don't even know that they have PE in a lot of the schools. And right now, you know, we're the most obese country in the world. And I think at minimum 50% of all the children are obese. You've seen those pictures of the beach in the 70s and the beach now. And it's, you know, it's a shame because we're wasting away again in uh, bad foodieville um, and toxic foodville. And, you know, it's not, we don't need to, we can do something about it. But the real hard part is changing. It's like inertia. You know, a body will stay at rest or stay in motion and less operated by an outside force. And uh, I think that's one of Newton's laws of thermodynamics or something like that. But, you know, we are set forward in a comfort zone. We wake up, we eat our food, we drink our coffee, we go to work, we spend our money, we go to sleep. And hopefully you have some fun in there, but it can be to a point where we're never able to eat what we need to eat. Um, and we don't even know what to eat anymore. You know, Numa was talking about teaching people to cook. That's, I think that's awesome. I'm, I'm going to love that show. Cause you know, I know that he just by what he said, you know, basically if food's got a label on it, don't eat it. And um, I concur. So food from the earth is, is, Great, but what do we do about the damage in our body already? Our, our 14 systems in our body are damaged. You know, um, a lot of people have peripheral neuropathy. That's the, the musculoskeletal system, the nervous system, the circulatory system, uh, you know, and, and the lymphatic system. There's four systems that are being damaged minimally right there. You know, there's the, the musculoskeletal system in your toes and hands are not getting the oxygen and food they need. So the nerves, the muscles are going to start to die or shrivel up in your feet and your hands. Um, you know, the um, oxygen isn't getting there. So the skin is going to start to suffer. You're not getting the, the blood vessels are clogged for whatever reason. So you're not getting the circulatory system there. The lymphatics, which are taking the damaged uh, stuff away, can't function well because the muscles aren't working well. So you get edema in the area or swelling amongst all of that stuff. So remember, 14 systems in your body, a minimum four are messed up already. So you only got eight left to work with. And if we think about it, the digestive system, which 
digests all the food you take, usually it's pretty messed up. Um, I think 95% of us have some sort of leaky gut or intestinal permeability. We've got terrible microbiome in our gut because we've killed it with antibiotics and things for so long. So our circulatory system, or our digestive system isn't doing very well. How many people are on um, high blood pressure or cholesterol meds? And, um, you know, you should really take a look at, go to PubMed and look up cholesterol medications and find out if they damage the mitochondria. And you'll find out that they do. They damage the um, coenzyme Q10 in the electron transport chain um, that kill your mitochondria faster than anything. So you're taking these medications, but you're on a slow boat to, you know, going six feet under or whatever you're going to do these days. So um, that doesn't mean go stop your cholesterol meds. You know, I'm not telling you to do that. And I don't prescribe or deprescribe medication, but um, one of the gentlemen that's, uh, I've been um, listening to and learning from when we talk about the speed of light, healing with the speed of light, E equals MC squared, you know, is um, talking about why do we need lower cholesterol? Well, cholesterol is what makes the brain function. It's what makes the cell walls work. Um, it is part of the cell wall. It, your eyes need it, your skin needs it, hormones need it. You need good, good cholesterol for hormone function. Estrogen, progesterone, testosterone all need cholesterol and they're drying us up by recommending lower, lower, lower cholesterol. And there's uh, one reason that you would want your cholesterol low, right? Hardening of the arteries or clogged arteries. So here's an interesting thing. You can go get an ultrasound of your heart or your aortic arteries, the ones going out of your heart, or the ones going up into your neck, the um, carotid arteries. And um, you can, and the vertebral artery that goes up into your brain, and they'll tell you if you have any plaque there. You know, if you're 50, 60, 70 years old, and you don't have any plaque buildup in your arteries, then you might want to question the doctor, why am I on cholesterol med? I don't have any building any building up of plaque. So am I taking this medication so that I don't get any plaque build up in my body, even though it's affecting my brain because my brain needs cholesterol? My cells need cholesterol. My hormones need cholesterol. I'm actually getting brain fog um, for whatever reason, you know, and um, hold them to the, you know, hold them to the whatever it is that you hold them to, you know, hold them to the carpet. Find out, well, why do I need to do this if my body doesn't have a problem um, with cholesterol building up in the walls? Now, there's a whole nother subject of what happens in the walls of the arteries as well, which I'm not going to go into today because we don't have time. But um, I would recommend that because a lot of people are put on um, restricted diets, uh, put on no sodium, uh, no salt diets or various things. Now, if you have heart conditions and stuff like that, absolutely, you need to um, do the necessary medical um, programs until you reverse it, if it's reversible. And most of the time, if you desire to do it, you can't, but you can't do it overnight. It's a lifestyle change. It's uh, you cannot, but you didn't know this, you cannot fix or heal a chronic condition with medication. Drugs aren't going to solve a chronic condition. They're only going to um, medicate it or they're going to um, hide it or something like that. So at any rate, you know, the... Um, we're in fall now and heading into the winter. So you want to take a look at what do I need to do to, to be healthy in, during this time? Now, luckily we live where we do in Santa Cruz here. So the weather's never too extreme. You can still exercise, go out and walk, go to the farmer's markets and get the food you need, which is awesome. So um, so anyway, healing with the, with the speed of light is, you know, I want to go into this a little bit more. 
Um, I've been studying lasers uh, now for pretty intensely for the last few weeks and going to websites that um, talk about how these work, why they work, um, what kind of conditions should you use them on, and add them to already existing pro programs for different type of diseases. Are they going to enhance it and speed up the healing? And the answer is most of the time, yeah. I mean, I haven't really found anything that says don't do it. So the speed of light is, uh, you know, you basically have, um, I'm going to do something here, just take a second. Okay, there it is. I'm putting up my slideshow here so that I can uh, talk smartly. So E equals MC squared. That's good old Albert Einstein. And uh, so that's the speed of light. Now, lasers are the speed of light, right? Light is uh, the visible spectrum of light, um, all the way from violet up to red with all of the um, greens and yellows and blues in between, is the visible spectrum of light. On the higher intensity end, the violet end, you have X-ray and gamma, which are more harmful. Gamma is really harmful. On the other end, off to the red, you have infrared. You can no longer see it. Now, they, those things have effects, some good, some bad, but the visible spectrum of light has been studied extensively, and you can find basically thousands of papers on PubMed on um, red laser, now violet laser, and green laser. And the green laser has really been out just for a couple years. Um, and you can find out what it does, but I'll give you the basic rundown. It helps give your cells energy. So I talked about this last week, and I'm, I'm just going to mention it again, that when sun hits the leaves on the tree, that chemical reaction, photosynthesis, creates an effect in the body. And from that, the, the body, the cells, the plant gets energy. And that's the same thing that happens in our body. When sun hits our skin or gets into our eyes, it creates vitamin D. And that vitamin D is what we need as a hormone in order to keep our skin healthy, our organs healthy, our brain healthy. Um, just about every organ in the body needs vitamin D. But the people that live uh, in Alaska that have you know, it's nine months of no sun, their vitamin D level is very low and they need to supplement it. Well, we need to supplement it too. And um, that's just an example of what the sun does. So the spectrum of visible light actually helps fuel the mitochondria. The mitochondria, again, are these little organelles inside our cells that are the power plant. They're the thing that burn sugar. When you eat, the end product of you eating is the mitochondria is taking that food and making energy out of it. So, you know, when you eat food, it gets in your mouth. Um, it starts to dissolve the starches in your mouth. It gets into your stomach. Acids in your stomach start to break it down. It gets into your small and large intestine. Microbiome digests that food into something absorbable to you because without those things, you're not going to be able to absorb the food. It would kill you. It would be poisonous to you. So the mitochondria or the microbiome, the bugs in your gut, they actually break down the food stuffs and put it into the bloodstream so it can be delivered to the cells and the cells can burn it at its basic um, component, which is either sugar or ketones. And it's going to uh, knock on the cell wall. And if the cell wall is healthy, meaning not full of canola oil and you know rancid oils, hard, and it's like trying to open a squeaky door, but it's a healthy cell, 75 trillion of them, that that sugar can get into the cell on a supply and demand basis. That sugar now inside the cell has to get into the mitochondrial cell wall and be converted to something called ATP, like the STP was the racer's edge. Well, ATP is the 
what creates energy in the body. It's the, the end product of what burns as fuel. So think about um, crude oil. You get it out of the ground and it goes through a whole bunch of steps to make gasoline that could be burned in your car. So um, that would be like glucose getting into the mitochondria and going through all of those different industrial plants to take crude glucose into something that can be created into ATP. Well, the lasers, the visible spectrum of light, which are you know the ones that you can see of the rainbow, those each color has a different effect on the actual mitochondria's ability to transfer one step to the next in that manufacturing plant to make ATP or energy. So imagine if you had put oil in a, in a, you know, you took crude oil to a plant and three steps were missing and you did, okay, well, we're just going to take this crude oil and pour it in the gas tank. You're going to have a messed up car. So when you have in your cells, glucose or ketones that can't get the steps needed to convert it to ATP, you're going to have a messed up cell just like a car that can't convert crude oil to energy. So this is what um, the, this is amazing that, and you can find all of this on PubMed, that the, the different lasers affect the conversion of the um, AT, or the, the different crude glucose, it takes it through the steps needed to make energy. So um, it's been proven to be successful in treating condi conditions. And there's, you know, there's, uh, it's so good at helping with wound healing, like, that's not in my scope. But the the one, the red laser has been being used since the, you know, 60s, in Russia, and, you know, for they used it for going into space and stuff like that. Um, but we found that especially the lavender, um, which has the highest intensity, um, it's really good for uh, helping with my, with bacteria and it's an antiseptic type of color. It helps create or boost the immune system in the body. But all three colors help with joint, joint pain. They all help with muscle strains um, and tears. All three colors help with degenerative conditions because in a degenerative condition, like even osteoarthritis, the bone cells, the mitochondria and the bone cells are breaking down and they're fatigued. And the end product is damaged bone tissue. So the mitochondria, by boosting it with the three different color lasers, is going to increase the function of the mitochondria in the bone and it can help with um, the pain from the arthritis. I haven't read the studies that say it's turning it around, but if you can slow it down or stop it and increase function, then that is pretty amazing. Um, once those cells, those cells are, are pretty damaged, I'm gonna to continue to look into it because the studies show um, in the zirconia website that it is helpful and in, in reducing the pain for osteoarthritis. Now, the ones that they have quoted have been approved by the FDA. Um, there's 21 of the 24 or five FDA approved um, laser studies have been done by zirconia, which is the product that I have. So I'm very comfortable with this. Um, it's really good for pre and post surgical pain. It helps the body heal better. Uh, tendon and ligament injuries, it's very good at helping with that. Bone fractures, again, it increases mitochondria. Chronic neck and shoulder pain and carpal tunnel syndrome and heel pain. So these are ones that they're saying, yeah, it's got, it's, it's actually created a 30% increase on the studies. And these are very, very well um, policed studies over about a four to six week period of time, but they found that even afterwards, the, con the condition continued to improve. So um, now the, the phot photon energy is absorbed in the mitochondria. That's what we're talking about. All of the photons, photons are light. And when um, the light hits a cell, 
the cell has um, nucleuses in it, and it also has electrons in it. And there's a ring around the nucleus or proton, one of the two, probably the proton. And then the um, electron rings, when you hit it with a laser, one of those electrons jump to a higher ring, which is harder to maintain. So as soon as you do that, that's going to jump up and then want to fall back. And when it falls back, it actually makes a photon itself, which is pushed on to its neighbor and its neighbor and its neighbor. And there's this effect of a cascading effect of the lasers in the body, which are pretty remarkable. And just how do they work? It's really simple. Lasers work to increase the cellular regeneration. And this involves the physiology of the cell metabolism, the mitochondria, and the synthesis of ATP. It also increases cellular communication, which is important. The, the way that the body communicates, you have 75 trillion cells and 14 systems made up that those 75 trillion cells make up. They have to communicate one with another and back and forth and to the brain and back. And the systems need to be working in together. And um, if not, you're in trouble. So this is uh, pretty cool. We know that violet is uh, somewhere around 400 nanometers and uh, all the way up to infrared is about 800. But it's about 380 to 760 that uh, the lasers are using. And... Um, the violet is the highest energy. Now, we don't want power. We're not trying to push in the most powerful laser possible. There are some other kind of lasers. These are class two lasers. I mean, they're high energy, low power, because the, the wavelength is what's the moving and moving into the cell and creating the ATP jump and the, the jump across the different four doors to make ATP and the different lasers are affecting different ones of those doors. But, um, you know, people always think bigger is better. And so they've made these very powerful lasers and some, some lasers are used for surgery. They're so powerful that they can be pinpoint into a body and cut things. So that's not this. These are very low um, intensity. They don't heat up the cells. Some lasers, you can't put them on body parts because they will damage the tissue. They'll actually create the breakdown of tissue. So these don't by design. The electromagnetic spectrum, you know, which is the co colors that we see and uh, has various effects on the microorganism. The violet is very good at breaking down viruses. The green is good at breaking down bacteria. The yellow and red get into parasites and fungus. So, you know, there is a lot of use for these to actually break down some of these intruders and it's not a drug. So again, don't stop taking any medication um, without talking to your doctor about it, but you can find out about these and, you know, find out whether or not what we're doing can help you. Um, so the mitochondria, again, it's kind of a crazy thing. It's called an electron transport chain which is glucose knocks on the door to the mitochondria. And in the process of putting the photons in there, this would happen without the lasers because we do have natural light as it is. But when you add the laser, it supercharges these. And it's going to walk through the different four different steps of the electron transport chain and supercharge it, which is cool. Now, in the one thing about anytime you burn fuel, you burn fuel in your car, you have exhaust, right? So um, that exhaust, you wouldn't put a hose in the gas tank and stick it in the cab of your car because it will kill you. So all those 75 trillion cells with their trillions of, of uh, um, mitochondria in the cells, all those cells have just, they're not just one cell, one mitochondria. The eyes have the most, I believe, the retina, the eyes, and the heart, and the brain are um, all of those are like the number one mitochondrial things. Now, think about when you take cholesterol meds, that damages the coenzyme Q10. We've known that for a long time. And the most highest um, amount of coenzyme Q10 uh, is in the heart. So, if you're taking cholesterol to protect your heart or to protect your arteries, if you're taking cholesterol meds, then you know, you're not only damaging 
the electron transport chain because you're reducing the amount of coenzyme Q10 in there. But um, you know, you're 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 damaging the body. Now, again, you can there's places that you can go to get, uh, I believe it's an ultrasound. I'm gonna look into this and I'll tell you guys next week um, that you can get done on your chest cavity. It's probably when you go out and you get one of those full body scans. Um they'll they'll be able to tell you as well. Do you have plaque in your arteries? If you do have plaque in your arteries, then you know changing your diet is probably appropriate. If you don't have plaque in your arteries, then changing your diet is probably appropriate. We all need to be healthier. You know, if it isn't the plaque there, you know, the the one of the main degenerative diseases that we have um is Alzheimer's disease or memory problems, dementias. And this has to do with the mitochondria in the brain, also as the laying down of plaque in the brain, amyloid plaque, which is a protein that gets laid down and it blocks the channels and blocks the communications. And, um, you know, some of the lasers have been shown to help with the, the plaque. I think it's, a, it's the violet laser. You can look that up on PubMed and go, do la violet lasers help with amyloid plaque? Um, I'm researching it. I telling you go look at it for yourself um so we want to do whatever we can to keep our brains healthy keep our body healthy and um i'll tell you one thing if you most almost everybody that comes in with any kind of peripheral nerve damage is also talking to us about brain fog or brain dysfunction or actually memory loss and um I talked earlier about the Oglio scan at our office that we do have. And, uh, you know, um, it's a, it's a photocytometer re so photo, meaning photo, we take a photo of the cells and we uh, measure the elements in the cell. It's not something we do in our office. It's sent to, um, via the web to, uh, a major company that will take, the pictures that we take of your hand in a nanosecond, it will give us a breakdown of what your cells look like. So in the old days, to do a heavy metal test, we had to do a urine test. You had to take some um, what we call chelators, a heavy amount of chelators, and then pee for six hours in a cup and send that into a lab. And two weeks later, we'd know what was going on in the excretion which your body let go of, of heavy metals into your urine. So it wasn't the perfect test. It was better than the hair analysis. But now with this picture of your cells that we can do in our office, we can find out what your heavy metal load is right away. We put that along with what's going on with the nerve function. When, when we test those systems in the body, um, you know, we do vibrat vibratory, um, how how are the deep tendon reflexes going? How's the vibration in those limbs? You know, because limb position, a lot of people with peripheral neuropathy don't know where they're putting their feet. They have numbness, tingling. They don't want to walk on uneven ground. Um, these type of things are, you know, a real drag when you're um, still young in the head. I have so many patients that are in their 70s or 80s go, gosh, I still feel like I'm 16 in my brain, but my body just doesn't agree. So, you know, there's a lot to live for. There's a lot of stuff that we can do to become healthier. And it's just important that we um, do look at the crowd. And if we're rated 47th or 79th in health, and you want to stay in that category, then that's okay. Maybe you're going, I'm good. You know, I'll just kind of hang out till the bitter end here. Or if you're going, you know what, I want to hedge my bet. There's a lot I want to do, or you want to get over, a, you know, low back pain. These lasers are great on shoulder pain, um, headaches, neck pain, wrist problems, um, low back pain, uh, even heel pain. It's been, you know, the studies that the FDA have looked at um, those except for the headaches. I don't think they've got one for that yet, but the shoulder pain, low back pain, carpal tunnel syndrome, um, ankle pain or plantar fasciitis, heel pain. Those have already, those tests have gotten cleared. 
Now, <laughs> it takes millions of dollars to get one cleared, but we're, we're getting great results with this already. Now, I was starting to talk about the when you burn fuel in a in a car and it comes out the exhaust pipe. Well, inside the mitochondria, when you burn fuel, it creates exhaust as well in the way of free radicals or oxidative stress. So those are oxygen molecules that are created in the that thing called the electron transport chain, or when your sugar, the glucose gets in the cell and goes down four steps to become ATP, bad oxygens are created as a byproduct. Those bad oxygens can stay in the cells, especially if you're really bad at detoxing. Well, hydrogen water, which I'm sure you've heard of, we have the Echo in our office. We sell them in our office. And Dr. Paul um, Bart Bart Bartilleri, um, he is the guy who created it. And, you know, so when you get extra hydrogens in your water, they get into your body. They're the smallest element on the planet. They can go immediately into the mitochondrial cell and they grab that bad oxygen. What are two H's and an O? Water. So you put hydrogen in the body. We're already 11% hydrogen anyway. So you put hydrogen, extra hydrogen in the body. It's going to scavenge the mitochondria and other parts of the body for free radicals, turn it into water so it can be urinated out of your system. So Really, when we do sell these little things at the office, you can see them online, but you really want to get the one that Dr. Paul made because it is the best. And, you know, you can attach them. We have them on our faucets at our house. So we're constantly getting hydrogen water. So right now, 370, there's 365 million people in America, 12 million have cancer. 26 million have diabetes, 17 million have heart disease, 7 million have strokes, 25 million are diagnosed with thyroid disease, 25 million have peripheral neuropathy, 25 million have some sort of autoimmune disease. So, you know, and this is not necessarily what should be. So we're here. Um, I would highly recommend you give us a call. Uh, we never charge to sit down and talk to you about what's going on. We can't help everybody. Not everybody's ready for it. And our office is not, you know, necessarily the ones that the office that you're going to feel comfortable in. But, you know, if we can help you, we'll let you know. And um, the wrong thing to do is nothing. And if you do have peripheral neuropathy, though, we are the really the game in town. We're making incredible strides and adding the the uh, laser to it now is pretty phenomenal. So it's been nice talking at you all today and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thank you.